and of course this incorporates the um, the secret esoteric traditions of the West, so secret societies um, such as um, the, the, the Order of the Golden Dawn, the Rosicrucians, um, Freemasonry. Now, all of these ancient traditions are hidden by secret codes. And it's only by understanding the codes that you can start to encrypt, to de-encrypt, should I say, all, all of these hidden teachings. Now, they're very, very complicated, very, very complex. So, so to be able to put that down on paper in a meaningful way, um, fundamentally, so, so that the reader can just pick, any reader can pick it up, and, and begin to understand it, it's had to be stripped right down to the bare bones. Now, when I mean stripped down to the bare bones, the, the book is divided into two parts, and the, fir the first part is fundamentally about the teaching. It, it shows you the methodology and the tools, um, and gives you the tools for you to actually walk the path yourself uh, in a very meaningful way. Uh, something that you, you, you don't need to, to be showy about, People don't actually need to know that you are walking this final great path, for example. And the first part deals with the, the hidden teachings. And fundamentally, it, it deals with love and devotion by focusing on the divine. Now, the second part validates the teaching. And, and, and in that, that first part, um, I was very graced by, by actually coming across a hidden master and have been taught by this hidden master for something in the region of 25, 26 years on a personal level. Now, what the second part does, it validates the teachings that were presented to me by the hidden master and also that is, that is kept within the, the sacred traditions of India, for example, in the Vedas um, and, and, and the other sacred writings, including the core um, of, of the Bhagavad Gita. Now, the second part validates this in as much as it, it, it de-encrypts the meaning behind the Great Pyramid. The Great Pyramid at one time was the largest building in the world for something like 4,000 years and the tallest building as well and consists of something in the region of 2,300,000 blocks. Now this pyramid was not built as a tomb for a megalomaniac pharaoh to be buried in. It's actually a very, very simple teaching held within it. Now, when I mean that the Great Pyramid actually validates, um, so I'll give a very brief kind of, um, to, to, to prick your curiosity, is Egyptology, for example, they always portray the passage and chamber systems within that Great Pyramid looking from east to west, and they splay like this so you've got the descending passage under the ground you've got the queen's passage and you've got the rising ascending passage and grand gallery and you've got the subterranean chamber you've got the queen's chamber and you've got the king's chamber however there's a deafening silence to the north south aspect of those passages and chambers for when you take it from that position it delineates the figure of a man standing up inside the pyramid so this is where it gets very interesting as regards all of these encryptions and the secret codes of the Israelite stroke Hebrews that all tie in and actually acknowledges and validates the interpretation of this sacred encryption, a message from the past for the future. Whoever created the Great Pyramid or whoever conceived the Great Pyramid must have had the power to look into the future and knew full well that humanity was on a downward spiral into ever increasing darkness until we find ourselves where we are today in a spiritually speaking a moribund condition so they had to encrypt all of all of this knowledge in such a way and with such complication that once it was understood it would be irrefutable so that was the purpose of all of these secret hidden encryptions that now the, the world is in a position to understand the reasons behind the creation of such an astronomic monument.